Hi, this is Dia, and you are watching Rank Episodes. been getting me going i think it's more of like thinking about the future and what's to come next because i'm very like so much of a forward thinker i always like to think ahead and think oh what can i do to improve on like my craft or like what can i do tomorrow what can i do today you know so that's really what's been keeping me going like the motivation you know there's always going to be something better in the future something eventually will happen you know i've been in this headspace of like i should start like manifest manifestation is a one it's a big thing for me also Like, cause I really want to bring good things into my life. <laughs> so actually, but for a while, I wasn't actually planning to be a musician or um, be an artist. I've always had that mindset of like go to college and then apply for a job, and you know that that was my game plan actually, but because. I didn't have this opportunity, and then when I got this opportunity, I was like, "Wow, I can actually become an artist now. I can do this as my career." So, basically, that's how I like became an artist, or wanted to become. Like that mindset became my mindset. <laughs> oh. and, I mean, I've always loved. Also, I've always loved music. It's mm-hmm. like one of my biggest passions. Like on the sidelines. Actually, I interned with um, MCA before I signed with them. Okay. But that was great. I didn't. It was more like I really wanted to work in the music industry um, for my job. That was really my dream job to be like um, a music exec or an A and R and help other artists. But then through mm. them, I got a really great opportunity. Um, I did have those thoughts because you know it's the pandemic and it's really delicado to have like live shows and mm-hmm. you know as an artist you really miss out on that and I haven't ever gig like sang like my own songs and performed for people like at a big stage with mm-hmm. my own music it's always been like covers or someone else's work so that's what I wish I had right now as an artist but honestly I wouldn't have waited. Any longer because I really wanted to grab the opportunity like by the horn and like just take it now because I I love music and if I could do it right away at this age and start early I would do it. When I got the opportunity, I found out right and I was like, wow, okay, I can finally sign. And again, I had a lot of thought process like, okay, is this a smart idea? You know, but this has always been my dream ever since I was. Probably like six years old because if you ask six year old me what you want to be, I want to be like a pop star. I want to be a singer. I wanted to be like Hannah Montana. Like I had the wig and everything. <laughs> so even like despite the pandemic and everything, I still really wanted to do it and um, take the opportunity. Um, and in regards to like um, working with other artists, I think even though there's a pandemic and it's hard to see people, you can still work with them. Like for example, I worked with Blaster. Um, on Dream, and we were able to work through Zoom calls and just back and forth. And I feel like that was a good dynamic. Naman, mm-hmm. there were I didn't find any problem in it, and I was able to learn from him as well. It was really cool. I met um, and through the label also because they were super cool and in, like introducing me to the, my label mates. So um, I became really good friends with Fern and Zach, those two. So yeah. How has it changed my worldview? Okay, so in terms of worldview, I guess it's more like um, a lot of bad things can happen, but a lot of good things can come out of the bad things. In a sense, like as bad as things can get, there's always going to be a silver lining to it. So, for example, in terms of artists and the pandemic, um, we're so lucky to have like digital streaming platforms and you know online concerts and streaming platforms so at least like as an artist you can still put out your music and like lots of people can still discover you and listen to your music it's just the only thing was the you know um the live gigs which we can't do which is really sad <laughs> but yeah and I-, i guess with the pandemic um as a human like i wasn't able to spend a lot of time with my well i didn't spend as much time with my family before the pandemic 
mostly because I was like interning and my parents had work, so no one was like home a lot. My little brother was home a lot though. Um, but because of the pandemic, I am now able to spend time with my family a lot, which I'm really, really grateful for. Like the family time and spending time with my friends as well. Like the ones who are, you know, vaccinated and the ones who are weren't like safe. So it was actually both my parents, my mom and my dad. So for my mom, she played a big part in some of the artists that I listened to. So for example, Nora Jones is one of my most favorite artists of all time. Um, I have the story that I tell everyone. When I was six or like four, four to six years old, I couldn't sleep without Nora Jones um, come away with me on. Like it had to be on for me to fall asleep. It was either that or don't know why. So even to this day, I love, those are like, one of my favorite songs and my dad um, as well he introduced me to a lot of like cool music like my love for R&B is because of my dad he introduced me to um, Miguel so Adorn is also my one of my other favorite songs and that um, introduced me to the world of like SZA and Frank Ocean and Daniel Caesar and the list goes on and R&B really is my like most favorite genre that's why a lot of my music is inspired by that um, and if we track back to the beginning, beginning, <laughs> I had, so like, you know, every Asian kid, we all have piano lessons and voice lessons. Well, I had voice lessons growing up. So that was like majority of like grade one to like grade 12. So my whole younger years. And then eventually I got interested in the ukulele and guitar. So I taught myself how to play those instruments. And then in music class, I learned musical composition and songwriting and that was honestly music class was my favorite class like that was the only class I could really sit down and listen even if it was music theory and I know music theory is so boring but I just love music so much like learning because it really helps like it applies so much to like music production like I had to relearn music theory recently and I was like wow this really helps me in like making the chords and everything so yeah and then um took a gap year, interned, and I started music production back in 2020, in March, because I really wanted to try it out because I loved songwriting and I was like, what can I do to actually make songs, which is music production. So I taught myself through GarageBand, through YouTube tutorials, and then eventually progressed and now I'm using Logic. Um, so again, growing up, I, most of the music I listened to were, um, was because of my parents. So they introduced me to all of like the music I started listening to. Um, but you know, as I grew up, I branched out. So for example, I listened to a lot of indie pop. So Claro also is one of my biggest influences. I really love her music, Fame Impala. And there's a lot of like cool other indie, indie pops, pop type songs. Um, for rock, my favorite has to be um, Dave Matthews band. It's just, a lot of people get shocked when I say Dave Matthews because you know they're, um, you know the older generations. <laughs> like usually my generations, if you tell them, you know Dave Matthews, they're like, no, I don't. <laughs> so you know, um, Dave Matthews is my favorite. Like Crash into Me and Ants Marching, favorite songs, and I just love like rock in general. Uh, my Tito showed me Foles last year, and they're also one of my favorite bands. Like I listen to their songs all the time. Um, but yeah, but personally, when once I like learned about all these music, I like went more towards the R and B side because that's what I really relate to the most in terms of my singing style and my music style. Because I don't know, I just really love the soul of each song and what all the lyrics mean. Because it's R and B in a way is a bit different than pop because pop always well it depends. Like the generic pop usually follows like the specific like. Um, same melody like verse chorus pre-chorus and then some r&b songs like they have they follow like jazzy chords and sometimes the melodies are a bit different so that's why i love it so much and you know of course daniel caesar frank ocean of like frank ocean has to be my number number one number one <laughs> from all the r&b artists and then from the female sizza her i love her's music puts me to sleep and then for another influence, probably Billie Eilish as well, because 
um, I really was so inspired by her and because of the way she like talks about her music and the way she writes because she doesn't like sticking to a specific genre. So that's where I got that mentality from because it's like, wow, she just makes music she, like, that she wants to make. She doesn't stick to one specific style. So. so I'm very, very lucky with my label because they don't force me to sound a certain way. So for example, in Island Records, there's a lot of different artists that sound different. Like we all have different genres. Um, I think I'm the closest to Fern though, <laughs> but um, in terms of them being pro artists, it's so nice because they're really, really supportive in the music I make. And it's more of guiding me in a certain direction. Like they give me advice and tell me what makes the most sense to release right now or what they think is a very, very strong song. So for example, um, Dream, they thought was a strong song, Heart Hates Me. So like the first two singles and they really helped me decide what to release first. Um, and also in terms of that, they really helped me. So for producers like Crown, for Heart Hates Me, um, Crown is, I'm a really big fan of Crown. I've been listening to him since high school because of his collaboration with Jay Con, Jess Connelly. Like wait, it's like was on repeat for a good four years. <laughs> so that's probably why. And when they told me that he was going to be working, like they got him for uh, my single, I freaked out. I was like, oh, are you sure? <laughs> like, is this real? I don't understand. But I was super, super happy because they were able to help me with that. And I, I love the turnout of the song. He made it what it is now. And it's so much better than the original demo. Um, and yeah, and it's cool because they get to connect me with like different artists. So also with Blaster, I worked with him for Dream and it was so cool because he had like a different style, right? He has a different mindset. So that's why Dream sounds so indie pop and so different. It doesn't sound like R&B at all. <laughs> and then with the EP, they connected me with Fern. I actually met Fern through our Baby Rye performance first and then um, I continued working with him and I love working with him because we have around like the same music taste, like the music we listen to daily, it's like, kind of the same <laughs> as well. So we have a good workflow and it's really nice because um, the label really like motivates me and they push me, they're like, oh yeah, like you can you can work with this person, we can help you like work with this person if you if you want, you know, and they help like connect me with other artists. And it's perfect because like I really learned so much from them. So for example, Zach, um, I met him through the label as well. Um, he's a producer. So I sent him demos before and like tell me tips like, oh yeah, with your guitar, record it, record it with the actual microphone. Don't record it with the plug. Like it sounds better that way. Use this sample, blah, blah, blah. And other tips as well with Fern. So like I've learned so much from those two specifically. So yeah, I, I'm just super happy that the label like empowers their artists and help, like helps them, you know, put out music that they want to put out and love. So I think my, f okay, let's start with the stressful. So I think I'm the same as you. Like I, it's hard for me to start sometimes, but then like, I, I don't know how to start sometimes. Cause I'm just like, okay, I'm at my computer, like right here, this is my setup. And then imagine me sitting this way and I'm just like, okay, what, what do I do? <laughs> what do I, how do I start? Do I start with a uh, chord progression? Do I start with like, I don't know. Like I get so confused sometimes, but then, the most thrilling part about it, or my most favorite part, is when I actually get going. And when I'm making a beat, and I'm layering and layering, and I'm finally getting somewhere. And the best part, absolute part, is finishing a song for me. Because yeah. I feel that it's very um, fulfilling. And it's just like, wow, I made something. It's there. <laughs> I, I produced it. I did it on my own. And I think it's also, in a sense, a bit nerve-wracking releasing my own um, produced music. like music that I produce because I just started I started last year and I don't I'm, I'm still getting there I'm I'm happy with my improvement from that year because I was not the best um it was it was okay like I was of course I was a beginner that time I think I'm still like a little bit of a beginner now <laughs> I'm still learning the ropes of like logic and the software and you know songwriting still but um I, I just have these thoughts sometimes like is this, is this good enough you know is the production good enough here could I could I have done better what could I have done to like elevate the song more but sometimes you get to a point where it's just like you can't do any you can't do anymore you're just you stop now you're just like that's the best I could have done I'm good 
then it's super exciting when you release it and you're like, oh my god, it's out and I made it myself. So yeah, it's very satisfying. Like, wow, I can't believe I did this. I still I still have a lot to learn in terms of my music production. I'm still on my my journey. Unusual. I don't think it's unusual naman because everyone like a lot of people write songs about like their exes and like the relationships they've been in. I think the most unusual I guess it's a bit unusual. The very first song I wrote, it's called Puppet Strings, was about a crush I had in grade eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think that's the most unusual because it was such like a giant happy crush and I was like, oh my god, he's so cute. So I had I just wrote a song because I guess he was such a big inspiration at the time, but I know that that's what started with all the um, songwriting. But in terms of other inspiration, sometimes I get inspired out of my own thoughts alone. Like I'm just thinking of something, I'm like, okay, and then a melody pops pops in my head, and I feel like other artists can agree with with me. Like sometimes I'm just like chilling, and I'm just singing random notes, random um, you know, songs, and I'm just kind of freestyling a little bit with not, no music just by myself and I'm like oh I like this melody and then I tried to like build something off of that yeah. so with the EP um, surprisingly I didn't make it in a way that it was built around a specific theme it was more that I made these songs and they all are related in a way like they all have their um, similarities and in theme so it was perfect because I could easily like create a theme around it which was um, I wanted it to be as as if you were reading diary entries of my life or specific times in my life so for example um, Faded is a specific like those feelings were a time in my life like a r- real feelings um, Beautiful Disaster Take Me Away as well um, Dream too so they're all like basically pages of my life in a sense and my emotions so it's kind of like an insight to my brain <laughs> and it's more like I guess diary entries right and I wanted to write these songs in a sense where it's like I'm talking to the person it's about but they're never going to see that letter they're never gonna see that they're not gonna know what's about them it's just more like here is it, it, it is what it is I need to get it out of my system and now it's this and the reason why I called it don't quote me it's because I don't want people to relay those feelings like that that's now, like as of now. Like those feelings are back then, they're gone. Um, they were my way of taking it out and letting go and moving on in a sense. So yeah, that's why that's why it's called Don't Quote Me. And I actually settled that name. I was with my best friend, she was really helping me like pick of names and then that one came up because you know when I when I write songs Sometimes the person I write it about knows, sometimes they don't. <laughs> but when I was talking to her about it, I was like, yeah, I really don't want them to like tell that, that tell other people it's about. <laughs> you know what? So that's why I was like, don't quote me, please. Like this is an old feeling. But yeah, but they also all revolve around the theme of like um sadness, heartbreak, falling in love. Like it's a lot of a mixture of emotions, but yeah, it's it's my diary entry like a bit of bit of a bit of the uh, in each song i'm happy with whatever people want to feel when they listen to my songs because i always say this it's i it's the best when i can find comfort in a song that i find because it describes my situation perfectly so if people can find comfort in my music um that would be amazing because you know I love finding music and like connecting with it and I think that's really my main goal for people to connect with what I am putting out there and what I'm saying and like I love it when people don't feel alone. I don't want people to feel alone because you know how sometimes when we go through these um, patterns or like we can go through depressive episodes, we're anxious and you know when you listen to a song and that artist is also feeling the same way, you're like wow I am not alone. So mostly, so for example, for Take Me Away, I think that one was the most raw song on my EP because when I was writing it, I, to be completely frank, yeah, I was in a like a depressive episode. I was very anxious at the time. And that's how it, like that's, that was like my main mode of therapy, like that specific song. And I took it all out and put it in that song. <laughs> so yeah, 
in terms of like feeling anyone can feel what they want to feel with my music but it's really mostly just hopefully they can connect with it but also i'm gonna add <laughs> um for dream i just hope people are happy with that song because it's a very vibey song <laughs> and it's a very feel good in a sense so if people are feeling happy with that one and it would be great <laughs> As an artist and a performer, so of course, as an artist, we all have our giant aspirations. I guess right now, I think the closest bucket list I have, which I maybe just have a, the gig live and perform my own songs. That's number one on my bucket list. After the pandemic is over, I really want to perform live because I, I just love performing in general. It's always been like my one of my loves just performing i used to do that a lot in high school um, another bucket list is to perform <laughs> maybe far in the future you never know at like a cool festival like all that energy and like people jumping around and actually i've never been to a festival myself i've never like even wonderland i've never gone which is so sad i really wanted to go but but it would be super cool to like perform at the, at the festival because you know, feel that energy of all the people and then eventually, you know, travel abroad, the gig, and all these kinds of things that are super, super cool. Collaborate with other artists, with artists that I look up to, because I'd love to learn from them as well, see what their thought process is, pick their brain, you know. Maybe it will help with my music and my craft, help me grow as an artist. I'm so young, I think I'm... <laughs> I'm still figuring life out. I honestly, right now, I don't know if I have life. On, like, I don't have. Don't think I have a grip on life yet, mm -hmm. fully. Honestly, because I'm, of course, I'm still growing and I'm still learning a lot of things. I'm a completely different person from when I was like 16, and I feel like at 16 I felt like I was wow, I'm so mature. I'm 16 years old. Like I know a lot of things. And then I look back at my mindset, like at that age, and I was like, wow, I didn't know anything, and I'm only 19. And I can imagine, like, at 25, when I look back at my 19 year old, I'll be like, she didn't know anything either. <laughs> she doesn't know what she's gonna get, like, into. Like, and I'm still at, like, the cusp of adulthood. I'm still turning 20, and I don't live alone yet. I still live with my parents. And, of course, like, at that, there's gonna be a point where I do live alone, and I'm gonna have to figure out everything by myself. <laughs> you know, I still have to go to college. I'm starting this year in August. So it's like a whole different world I have to get myself into first before I realize like I have life figured out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I talk to, for example, my relatives who are like 28, 29. They're like, yeah, we're this old, but we still don't feel like adults, you know? So in a sense, maybe emotionally, I guess, like I'm very in tune with my emotions and I feel what I feel and I, I guess I accept it. I let it, I let myself feel it and then I let it go, which I feel like is, I guess, a mature for my age because I don't really react too hard to anything. I don't really burst out in flames and I get angry at people. <laughs> but um, yeah, in terms of life, I think yeah. I have some, some things figured out, but I have, I have a lot to learn. Hey guys, it's Dia. Don't forget to stream Don't Quote Me. It's on all digital streaming platforms and I'd love for you to hear it all and listen to my music. Thank you!